Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel IASTEC. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to stay updated with our latest tutorials. Today we are going to learn how to reload a component in Angular 17. This is a handy technique when you need to refresh data or reset component states. So let's dive right in. Before we jump into the code, let's quickly discuss why you might need to reload a component. Sometimes you need to refresh a component to update its data, reset forms or respond to user actions without reloading the entire page. Understanding how to do this can improve the performance and user experience of your Angular applications. First things first, make sure you have the Angular CLI installed. If you don't, you should install the Angular CLI by running this command npm install dash g at angular slash cli but before running this command make sure that you have node.js and npm installed in your computer once you have the angular cli installed you should create a new angular project if not created already so for that you can run this command ng new reload component you can give it whatever name you prefer once the project is created you should go to that project and open it in your favorite editor in this video, I will be using the VS code. I already have created my Angular project and I have basic hello world text in it. I have removed all of the unnecessary code from the app.component.html. Now we will create a new component to demonstrate how to reload it. So for that, open the terminal in the root directory of your project and run this command ng generate c for component and the component name i'm going to name it example press enter this will create a new component called example component so now let's start working on all of the methods to reload the component the first method is using the router for reloading one of the simplest ways to reload a component is by using angular's router so let's add a button that triggers a reload so open the example.component.html and let's add a div and within that div I will add h1 tag with the text example component and then we will add a p tag with the text content before reload and then we will display the content okay and now I need to add a button and let's add some text reload component and then we will register a click event that will call a function reload component on click okay now open example.component.ts and let's add some logic there so first of all i need to define a property content of type string by default i will give it an empty string now i need to inject a service called router so you can inject it with the help of the constructor or you can use the inject function so let's use the inject function in this tutorial so i will define a private property with the name router and give it response of the inject function call and pass it the router service make sure to import the router service from the angular slash core and also import the inject function now I am going to define a function reload component and we will define a variable let current URL is equal to this dot router dot URL. Now we will navigate away from the current route and then back to it to reload the component. So for this I will use this dot router dot navigate by URL and pass it two parameters. First one would be the slash that will take us to the root parameter and then i will add an object as the second parameter and there i will pass a property skip location change and pass it true and then this navigate by url will give us a promise so we can use dot then function on it to wait for it to resolve and we will pass it a callback function so this function would be called once it has been navigated to a different url once it is navigated we will use this dot router dot navigate and pass it an array and give it the current url where we want to 
take the user back so in this way user will stay on the same url where they were before i also need to create a function load data so this will simulate the fetching data so here i will use this dot content is equal to a string that will have a text data loaded at and now we will concatenate the date object and now we will define a constructor and we will call the load data function as soon as this component is loaded so this constructor would be executed and this will call the function load data and it will update the content variable so in the reload component logic we use the router to navigate away and back to the current route to reload the component and within that we use the skip location change and set its value to true that tells the router to navigate without updating the browser's url this means that user won't see the url change making the reload seamless now let's go to the browser but before that make sure that your server is running okay and if it is not running you can use the command ng serve in the terminal so once it is running in the browser we have to create two routes so for that i will create a component as well so for that i will run the command ng generate c test press enter okay the component test has been created in the app.routes i will add my routes so first route would be path example and the component would be example component and now we will define a second route in this way path empty and here we will have the component that would be loaded on this route it would be test component save it okay now in the app.component.html i will remove everything and here i will add the router outlet save it so within that outlet all of the components would be loaded with the help of the routing okay now it's time to test it is showing the test component at this time because we are on the root path so let's go to the example route and here we can see all of the data the heading and the content before reload and data loaded was at this time so you remember this time these seconds as soon as i will click on the reload component button it will reload the component data and you will see the latest data into it so if you do that you can see that the data has been refreshed okay you can click it on several times to observe the difference now let's move on to the second method that is using rxjs subject so another way to reload a component is by using rxjs subjects to trigger a refresh this method is useful for more complex scenarios where you want to reload the component based on specific events so for that let's create a service called refresh so that will handle the refresh logic so run the command ng generate service and get, name it refresh but before that let me make a commit for you so that you can have all of the steps all of the methods separately implemented and available online to follow along so i will share the github url as well where you will find all of the commits so before that i will create a branch where i will be pushing all of these commits of this tutorial so let me create a new branch with the name reload component press enter the branch has been created now i will push my commit git add and here i can add a commit with the message reload component with router okay commit that push it all right now let's proceed to the second method so i need to create a service ng generate s refresh press enter okay the refresh service has been created now let's add our logic within that service so first of all we will define a subject to trigger component refresh so here i will add a private subject refresh subject is equal to new subject make sure to import the subject from the rxjs and the data into it would be void and initialize it now we will create 
a getter with a name refresh and i will return this dot refresh subject dot as observable okay so this getter will return observable that components can subscribe to now we will define a method to trigger the refresh so we will name it trigger refresh and we'll use this dot refresh subject dot next and save it now let's modify the example dot component dot ts to use this service so for that go to the example dot component dot ts and let's define a private variable subscription okay but we don't need the router service anymore so i'm going to remove it from here and add that private variable subscription and the type would be the subscription as well make sure to import the subscription from the rxjs okay and now i need to inject the service that we just created for that i will create private property refresh service and assign at the response of the inject function and pass it the refresh service and make sure to import the refresh service as well okay now we need to implement the ng on init and ng on destroy lifecycle hooks so for that we need to add implement keyword here after the class name and let's add the on init and on destroy we have to import both of these so i have just imported them we don't need the constructor anymore but instead of that i need to add ng on init and within that we will write our logic so in the engine init we will subscribe to refresh observable so we will save the subscription in this dot subscription variable that we just created and use this dot refresh service dot refresh dot subscribe and pass it and a callback and within that callback we will write our logic we will use this dot load data and we also want to load data by default so this dot load data should be called here as well so this load data would be executed only if this observable was triggered but in the beginning uh, when the component was initialized at that time there was no trigger or event so that's why we have to manually call the load data function in the beginning so so that we could have some data initially but once it is loaded it will keep watching to this observable and as soon as we receive some kind of signal then we will immediately call our logic execute our logic that will call this load data function okay now let's move on to the reload component here i am going to remove everything from here and let's rewrite it so this time this is going to be very simple we will trigger the refresh so as soon as the reload component is executed we will call this dot refresh service dot trigger refresh okay save it now let's implement the ng on destroy lifecycle hook and within that i will check if this dot subscription found then we will unsubscribe to it by using this dot subscription dot unsubscribe so this will help us to prevent the memory leaks so we have an error here that property subscription has no initializer and is not definitely assigned in the constructor this is just a typescript error so at the beginning there was no value so it is saying either make it optional or give it a default value so i will just add question mark here this error will be gone now it's time to test it so let's go back to the browser and here you can see the data has been loaded if you click on this button it will reload the data okay so it is still working but with a different approach now finally let's move on to the last method number three that would be using a conditional variable so another simple method to reload a component is by using a conditional variable this involves setting a variable to false and then back to true after a short delay effectively removing the component from the dom and then re-adding it so first modify the example dot component dot html to include the conditional rendering so this time i am going to get rid of the app dot routes actually before making that change let me quickly commit the changes for this method so that you can find them 
from the github so this time the commit would be reload component with rxjs subject okay commit that and let's push it all right now let's remove all of the routes from the app.routes because we don't need them anymore and in the app.component i will remove the route outlet and now i will directly embed the example component in this app component but for that we need to import the example component in the app.component.ts as we are using standalone components of angular 17 so we can simply add import the example component by adding it in the import array of the app.component.ts okay make sure to import the example component here as well okay after that i will add the app dot app dash example and with that you will still see the content of the example component okay now in the app.component.ts i will add a property show component and default value would be true and i will add a function reload component and here we will set the value of the show component to false and here i will add a set timeout and within that i will set the value of the show component to true and here i will add a minor delay maybe 50 millisecond or you can adjust it to maybe you can even add a very short uh, duration maybe 10 millisecond or 5 millisecond that would still work save it we don't need this test component so i'm going to get rid of that and i am also going to get rid of the refresh service so delete that as well in the app routes i'm going to remove all of the imports we don't need, need them there anymore we don't need the reload component in the example component also i'm going to remove this subscription part as well and let's remove this import as well and this line also okay all right we got rid of all of the old code and we don't need the reload button anymore here but we need that button in the app.component.html so here i will add it and we still have this function in the app.component.ts okay now we need to wrap our example component between the if condition by using that variable that we added in the app.component.ts so let's use that if and within that let's copy the variable name show component and uh, if this variable is true then show this component otherwise not okay save it now let's click on the reload component if you click on that you will notice that the component was reloaded okay so this is just an approach that might be useful in your case but you also have to consider that there is a little blink like if you click on that uh, the component disappears for a very short time period and then reappears okay or uh, let me reduce the time further to see if we can reduce it further but still you will notice a minor glitch but most of the time it will not be so visible if you want to understand more in depth you can open the inspect element to understand how this actually works okay so here i will increase the time wait period to four seconds okay and now let's open this and here this is the component that is loaded above okay but as soon as i click on my button then this component would be disappeared immediately and after waiting for four seconds it will reappear so let's do that in the inspect element you will notice that this component would be totally removed from the dom okay you can see that there is no component there at all after four seconds it will reappear like this okay all right there you have it that's how you reload a component in angular 17 using three different methods i hope you found this tutorial helpful if you did then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow developers also make sure to check out my blog ayaztech.com for the written versions of our youtube tutorials and other useful resources also don't forget to like share and comment with your questions feedback and suggestions and if you did not subscribe to my youtube channel yet then please subscribe to it and hit the bell icon to stay updated with our latest content thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video